call the meeting to order. It's six o'clock. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions? Dan? Yes, I have one, please. Um, let's add a. Uh, the form actually says pavement cup application, but it should have been a um, work in the right of way application. Um, where is that? Oh, it's a new one. New one, please. Yes. Okay. All right. Approve the minutes of August 26, 2019. Make a motion to approve. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I would just like to add my on my comments. I enjoy working with the people in the the um, town office in the town. Okay. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. <laughs> Next, community concerns. Buckley. I got a couple. Yes, sir. Reading your, reading your paper here. I want, I want you guys to explain to me uh, why our taxes are being raised up in this town. I know, I know the state robbing us, as usual. But you got to explain to me why our taxes are going this much, up this much this year. Because it gets to a point where I'm going to throw the towel in. And a lot of other people I've talked to. I want you to explain to them why the taxes are going up. It's because right every, now, everything know, goes is up. The state, is the state for the schools the problem? Is that one of the problems? They're telling us what to do? That's they want they want all the schools to join forces so they can shove it to us, right? Yep. A lot of people don't know, but the, like 80 to 85 percent of our property tax bill is the state education funding stuff. Has nothing to do with our municipal side of the budget is only 15 percent of our tax bill and it's frustrating because we work really hard and you're, you're welcome to come to any of our budget meetings and sit and we chip and chisel the tiny little bit that we have and not try to go higher and things like health care costs the we state, can't the control state tell you what you have to raise these rates yeah we have no choice so, we have no choice so all they want to do and my my point they took some of my health care here because they say, you stay away from work, I'm going to pay you more money. Yeah. So they want to take care of the druggies, the welfare, the homeless, and the worthless people. So I like to and that's about what the, I got. I have no use for the people in Montpelier. I told them, they don't let their call me. Don't step on my property unless you got a badge. The only thing that we can do is is talk to our legislators. Yeah, so I'm frustrated too. I think we all are. You know, but I agree with you. It's not sustainable. It can't just keep going up and up and up. We try to we have a very thin line to work with. We don't, we're very responsible with the money we spend. All of us are. And uh, we always call, call things. We get our department heads to chip and chisel away at why their budgets. The, don't, the don't we, Richard? Why is the highway driver down up to $2 million? Is that $2 million budget this year? I'm not sure exactly what it is. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I thought I saw a yeah. $2 million dollar mark. It's up, but not, not substantial, you know. Things, things are growing. Our town is growing too. We have to take on more well, We're not making more any sidewalks. money. We're giving to the thieves in one period. Well, we're going to have more on the tax roll, though. We're going to have more as development happens. We're going to have more added. I was going to go to South Carolina, but I don't know if I'm going to be having land down there now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I feel for you. I, I'm just telling you. Yeah. I, I don't need to. I, I, I'm not at the point where I, I, I can just pull the plug and leave. I'm a big boy. I, I stood for 20 towns around there. I think that, that'd be sad. But I, it's I'm true. not going to put up with the state. They, 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 not, they ain't going to play a game to me much longer. Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't care. But a lot of I people feel the I, same I, way. I, I just, on the good side of it, I want to tell you, finally we got some paving done. Yeah. Uh, and I wish we'd had more money to do more. Me uh, too. But that's the good side of it. But the bad side of it, taxes, the people can't afford this. No. You're just going to, you're going to kill the economy. You know? Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, I've got a good job, but my tax is almost a thousand bucks a month on my house. Wow. You know, that's a lot. They don't, those people down there, those liberals and socialists, where you want to go with like most of them, <laughs> they don't care about us up here one hour. Yeah. It, it's hard. I, I agree with you. When, I, when the governor gets out of there, but he has no power, anyway, you make a living with him. Buckley for governor. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd vote for you, Buckley. You might want to be one. I mean, I think yeah. there's a bunch of goddamn crooks down there. Just like the, the Democrats in Washington. They all be all tired and feathered. <laughs> I won't say that, but... That's my concern. Thank you. Jamie, you had a... Yeah, a couple, three questions. Hopefully you guys can answer them pretty quickly. 
Um, regarding the paving on Elmore Street, uh, I'm wondering if the manhole cover is going to be brought up flush to the level of pavement. Right I do know if they're done. That's the way the state spec the job. That's actually a state project. And they spec them to be three quarters of an inch lower than the top of the pavement. Well, that's I was just talking about it today, you know, because unfortunately they're right in the middle of the road. Yeah, and no, I, you, I mean, you're playing this and if you've got lights going up the side, you know, yeah. I was just looking down at, um, down by the light and down by the truck route. Mm -hmm. Those are all nice and flush with yeah. the pavement, so, but, all right, well, Yeah, but we can't control that. Okay. Uh, secondly, um, I'm curious about uh, the parking spots and how those are going to be painted down here where uh, Elmore Street starts. Um, and I guess whatever you call it, Main Street is right before. Uh, it is. But there's no, there never have been any parking spots. Where are you there. talking about, Jamie? Where are you mean? Down here, uh, where Elmore Street starts. What is it, Summer Street? Maple Street. From Maple Street Maple up Street. Street toward Elmore, is that Yeah, you're I guess. Yeah, so. from Maple um, Street up. So if you're headed up the right hand side of the street, right before Elmore Street. By Brian Kellogg Town. You're in a, you're in a, it's a bend that goes into Elmore right. Street. There have never been any parking spots painted there. There's also never been anything that says painted don't park here. And if someone comes down here, you know, regularly, especially on the weekend on Sunday, that is charter block full of cars and you cannot see out there. Right. So he's yeah, talking I'd about I'd like to see before the fire station. Yeah, right before the fire station. On the corner. Yeah. I'd like to see some oh, painting on the, okay. on, on the uh, pavement that says no parking um, right. because it's a hassle. Um, so if someone, whoever's in charge of that sort of thing, could take a look at it. Um, By the fire station? Before the fire before station. Before the fire station. It's before you get to the little dangerous triangle there. Right. I know what you mean now. So if you're coming down... Across from Street, the Congo it, Church or whatever. Exactly. Upper Main Street. Just there. Look right at the Y. When yeah. you come around. On Sunday. What happens is Sunday morning, all the parishioners yeah. want to park there, yeah. and you can't see. It's hard enough that, I mean, that whole intersection yeah. is a... Yeah, and I'll show you tomorrow. It's and a cluster exactly as it yeah. is. Yeah. I know so it's that too, you're right. I'd like yeah. to see something that says, don't park here, mm -hmm. um, because I don't think there should be any park in there. Um, so if someone could take a look at that, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, the same difference are down here. There's no difference than it's up there. You're coming off by the head that you come down the street, you got to shoot out in there because the car always parked right on the corner so you have to go out in the lane so there's not any difference up there than down here. Well, it's just some, something to signify that says don't park here. And we right now, have, we don't have park. any park anymore. We need parking. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, and then lastly, I wonder if anybody could shed any light on what is the holdup or if there's a holdup with the Do Hamel Pit 250 process. And why we don't hear we're, it's, it's we're, been about, over year yeah, we're about done with that as a matter okay. of fact so the engineer is going to finish up the last few details on that okay so when they said it was going to be ready mid winter it's mm -hmm. taken until now mm -hmm. it's taken yeah and what's the process after that it comes to you folks and yes it does does the public have a chance for comment or how does somebody get a hold of that to yeah. I mean, we're going to have a meeting once we get a completed application. We'll take public input. Yeah. Before it gets submitted to Act 250. Yeah. Super. Thanks. Yeah. Can you get, is there a list that you can put his name on? I'm already getting the emails about when the agendas are. And the games are taking place, but I'll okay. see from there. I just, I just you know, I think it's, yeah, I'm sure Gary knows, but to get through the Act 250 process for a print, you have to get through all the state agencies yeah. as well. Yeah. So we have been through all those state agencies and we have yeah. to get all the comments back from right. all I was just looking to just remember from last year yeah. where the timeline was mm -hmm. December or January yeah. and here we are a year almost to when we met out there last year. So mm -hmm. I was trying to yeah. see what was happening. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a lot of not weed in that gravel pit growing. Mm -hmm. There's some of them, yeah. yeah. Do they grind that right into the gravel and they do it? So where the knotweed is, we're not taking anything out of that area. So, I mean, the knotweed is in some areas have been well, reclaimed. Well, they actually got with the pollen and get them to get them in. I mean, we've got a hell of a mess around here now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, is there any other community concerns? Sorry I'm late, but there was a 1050 head-on by... Yeah, we heard the Yeah, about... So but it wasn't I had to go way around. Yep. All right, so next, liquor control. Do we have any liquor control there? No, sorry, I'm late. Accident. Okay. All right, old business. Discuss road acceptances. First one, James Road. 
can do these individually? I, I, it would make the most yeah. sense, I believe. Just to get the discussion opened up, I'll uh, make a motion that we approve James Road as second. a town hall. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I don't think it meets our criteria. So for the for the purpose of the discussion we're on James Road for the community that is the road off from Hool Avenue yeah. that now currently services two commercial buildings. Um, if you're not familiar with that is where Peach Repair, uh, not Peach Repair, Leo's Small Engines mm -hmm. across over Hool Avenue and then there's a, a short dead end uh, development there with a cul-de-sac at the end and they had uh, requested that we take over the, the road. Is there any discussion on it? Yeah, just just my opinion. It doesn't meet our criteria, like five dwellings. That was one of our criteria. Yeah, the five different structures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So, any further discussion before we How many vote? how many lots are on that road? Do we know? We don't know that. Any potential I think there's a potential for five. Yeah. I believe. It's something like that. Yeah. But nothing's yeah. built on all five. Chris, is it here? Six, maybe five, six. There's only two. One, two. Well, the, the school and then there's a health care building or something. Sports. Green Mountain. Green Mountain Sports Service. Yeah. yeah. As a house is going to be driving off this, it just goes through. Apparently, it may not. So how do you want to treat it? If there's potential houses or more more uh, lots there, there's, there's no buildings there right now, other than those two. I would say based on our criteria for road policy, that does not meet the standard. But I would say that all any road that is applied for, um, the current owners of that road could come back and appeal our decision, and we could take up whatever at that time. And we met with uh, with Chris at the, at, the, at the scene that day. Uh, the road certainly was built to our specs as far as gravel depth, width, surface, uh, snow removal area. Uh, all the all the pieces are in place except for the number of dwellings or, or buildings on the on the road. So. Mm -hmm. All right. All in favor, say aye. Any opposed? No. No. Motion fails. Next, Belanger Lane. Make a motion to uh, approve Belanger Lane as a town highway. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there discussion about it? When we met up there, there were a couple of areas of concern. Uh, one was further out in that corner, uh, adding gravel to the road to raise it up. Uh, it had not had any uh, new materials put on it. The sides of the road were higher than the road itself, so water would sit on the road during a, a good rainstorm. Uh, I think with materials added to that section, that section would, would pass. Uh, there are more than five homes out there. But there is one significant issue, and right at the top of the first hill, it's a sharp left-hand curve. The ledge comes right to the edge of the roadway. There really is no ditch there because the ledge outcrops right to the edge of the road. There is no way to, that I can see anyway, other than chipping away or hammering away at that, that ledge to remove it, to create a ditch so we could get some water flow off the side of the road um, is a concern for me, especially with snow melt. It just creates a choke point. There's no way to expand the road on the, on the other side because it drops off so steep down to Route 100. But that one corner with the ledge that sticks out there is concerning. And that would be something they would have to do? Yes. yes. Any and, and they haven't built a road up yet, right? I don't, I don't know. Have you added the materials on that? And the ditch has been shaped, reshaped. Okay. Um, so, stay mat put on the hill. Shouldn't we have somebody out there checking the it before we approve it? Now ready for paper. And there's six homes here. Yeah. Already yeah. built. Yeah. Yeah. More to be. yeah. Yeah. Well, there's one of the residents. That means that easily meets that requirement. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps we have the road foreman go out. Mm -hmm. and take a look to see what the improvements are. You can look at the trouble spots. Because yeah, I think it should be up to what it's supposed to be before we just get. Well, it has to be. Yeah. yeah. And right now it's not, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's you want to go out and take a look. And Dan can tell you the, the problem areas we're discussing specifically. 
if you could go out and take a look yeah. at those. And, and I'll, I'll put they, this back on the agenda, this row specifically for the, the meeting on the 16th of yep. September. If yep. the both of you together feel that, that that one choke point at the top of the hill has been uh, resolved, then I, I would be willing to okay. be in favor and the gravel added in that one section to raise the level. Bob, I assume you guys live out there? Yeah. Okay. Right. If we make a motion, if we make a motion with the, those uh, options pending, and then it could be automatically approved if they're already in place. Is I think we better wait, wait till they are done. Wait? Okay. I think so. Do you guys mind coming back again? Once it's looked at, I didn't, so, so I didn't realize you'd done the improvements on the road out there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yes, please. That way we can get it done. Yeah. So do we want to table this motion? Yeah. I think that's a good idea. We table it. Yes, I, I would recommend tabling the yep. motion until the September 16th meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to table this. Go ahead, Tony. Yes. On the uh, ditching on the right hand side of the ledges. How, what's the requirement of the ditch? Is there a certain distance you need? That's a, that's a, a great question. Yeah. It's a great question. If you've already, if you've reshaped it yeah. and, there is, and there is a significant ditch there, you know, that's going to handle the runoff, these guys will see that. And if they come back and say they're good to go, then I, I've got no issue with that. I don't need to go out and see it again if they say it's fine. But, uh, you know, when I, when I did see it, that ledge came right to the edge of the road and there's just nothing, no ditch there at all. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fred and I will get together and we'll go take a look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. So we make a motion to table this. Second. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. Next, Lake Lemoyle Drive. I'll make a motion to approve it to see it started. Second. We have a motion and a second. We have yeah, further discussion. Have three on yeah, I think it's no, no, it's, it's, it's just to get it on the oh, okay. discussion. Okay. All right. all we haven't passed it. Okay. We, we have, have to, to make a motion to do it. Okay. Then we can't make negative motions. We have to be positive, and then we vote them up or down. So, any further discussion about it? Again. To get the road approved and actually maintain in the future. Absolutely. Have you done? The house is on that road right now. Um, at some point within the next 12 months, there will be two more for a total of five. Uh, that's imminent. Uh, but once they're there, then you can do it. But they're not there. It's buildings on the property, you know. It's and they have lot. to be approved and stuff so by. It would have to go yeah. back through the approval process because the statutory, the 100 day statutory limit after the hearing. So we would have to go back through. Um, there are currently three houses on the road and a fourth permitted right now. Um, well, the fourth is permitted. So I would be the fifth then. Um, I, I think. I haven't uh, submitted my zoning permit yet. I think, I think yours is. Fall. Yeah, I think yours is the one that's permitted right now. I don't know about the fifth one. I don't think there's a fifth house permitted there right now. I think I'm probably using the fourth. Okay. Yeah. So once the fifth house is built, and then we would start the process all over again for acceptance. Yeah. Okay. So we have to revisit it. Yes. Right. Once you meet the criteria, you can. Has, be has successful. the road been looked at uh, structurally? I mean, you're saying it's. it's we it's, did. It's made so well, our only requirement we have to meet is the number of dwellings. There's some other issues too. Yes. This, well, the, the, our our policy is that. There has to be have to do a coring for the depth of the gravel. That's all right. we have to do is confirm that piece of it. Um, but the road itself, width-wise, I mean, dimensions was looked really good. It was. Talk about where the water was going to go, though. Um, on the hill. Yeah. It seemed to be all right, but it's definitely a nice road. I also yeah. wondered about the grade. It's pretty steep up there. Mm -hmm. Was there a des designated area for? I saw the road, but I wasn't there for the discussion. Is it a designated area for the snow? Yeah, that's a turnaround there. Okay. But as far as it does deeded area for the snow, that yeah. would be taken up as part of the process if we approve the road. Mm -hmm. They have to agree to a spot that we can. If I could recommend just to, so yeah, um, if it's all right with the, the, the homeowners or the landowners of the area, then I think it was Kevin, we could go up and test the depth now so that um, if it's not deep enough, then we can let you know in advance. Yeah, we could bring it up to spec. So obviously, we're not going to get it uh, maintained by the town this winter. Uh, 
next winter, the, we should meet the number of dwellings and if there is any upgrades that need to be done, yeah. you know, we can get them in place. So yeah. I guess that would be our, you know, our, our objective. Yeah, we, uh, we won't hold you up on our end. You know, once you've got things ready, we'll do it. Okay, we've got to hurry and build a couple of houses in. Okay, get them. If they build it, you, they will come, right? That's right. All right, so uh, any further discussion on Lake Lemoyne Drive? I'm just going to abstain. I did not view the road. Okay. No, All in favor say aye. Any opposed? No. 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 Okay. Motion failed. Next, Meadow Drive. Make a motion to approve Meadow Drive. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I'd like to hear what people have. I, I went to see the road, but I wasn't there for the discussion. Yeah, I think. Uh, At the end of Meadow Drive, we had a concern about a culvert, but we located that. Right. Uh, there, actually, the developer cut a, a drainage swale around the last property down there, so water runoff wasn't going to be an issue. Uh, I believe some trees were. There were some a trees issue. Uh, near the top of the hill that need to be addressed. And then ditches. And the ditches need to be defined. Um, and then the, I think we determined there was enough room for a, a, a 100 foot radius circle there. And then the only thing, the other concern was, you know, making sure we had the designated snow storage area. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which because there was some room for, um, so that was, you know, those were the things that we yeah. remember. Yeah. Didi, go ahead. Well, will we be getting a letter regarding, like, this so I don't have to I yeah. 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 Okay, because nobody else can make it. So yeah. we also discussed the gravel. You're you're a good advocate anyway, Judy. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's kind of ironic because the accident was tonight. Yeah. So I was late. Get out. Um. Okay. So so far it sounds good. We just have to address the concerns that we talked about that. Yeah, the trees, you know, the trees we're talking about. I think the trees on the PS property, and I talked to her, she's okay with it. I mean, she, yeah. And in the ditches in that area, too, there wasn't much for ditches. They just need to be improved. Yeah. I mean, they're there, but. Well, they, they have to be created. <laughs> <laughs> improved created. why they're there. there. There were no ditches yeah. at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough to handle. Right. And then. Uh, and then place to put the snow at the end, but I think we resolved that with the fact that we that swale goes around that property right. at the and end. Is there a timeline like I mean this isn't gonna happen obviously before this one through right. any of this approval. So it would be by next spring. Right. What you can do is work with Dan and right. okay. get it figured out. I think we did this this hearing was in the middle of July, is that correct? Yep. I think so. So you have a few there's a hundred and twenty day window after they have the on site hearing. Oh okay. So realistically, if it was done probably within we're end of August, middle of September, if it was done within the next 45 days or so, then we could revisit it pretty easily. If not, then we'll have to probably be more soon. Okay. I think financially, it probably will be next summer. Okay. Since I don't want to fund it. Okay. okay. And then I think, you know, same thing, contact me when you're ready to start the process over again, just okay. like we did last time, and we'll, we'll set up the hearings again. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah. I think it's a good candidate for Town Road, but it's got to get a few things done. Yeah, we didn't. I think we know it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? No. No. Motion failed. Again, I'm abstaining. Next, Sholin Road. I make a motion to approve Sholin Road. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? I'm pretty sure the amount of money it would take to bring that road up to spec would be um, would be problematic for any homeowner living up there. The, the road itself was more of a uh, farm trail, a country trail. The trees were in the road. I mean, we had the branches were brushing my truck on both sides going up through. It wasn't, it wasn't even close to being to the standards that we would expect the road to be in before we would take it over. And it's not wide enough. I think if we could get those, the list of things they need to do and uh, give it to the homeowners that are. I can put that one together pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. Distribute it to the, yeah. the people who live there so they get an idea and maybe they can get a, a price on a realistic ballpark of what it would cost yeah. to get it. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Eric could best send them copies of the policy 
That's, that's great. So, you know, yeah. when, when we send out the letters. Yeah. And there's still, there's nobody here for that road? Mary Ellen, I think. Mary Ellen. Oh, yes. Hi, hey, folks. Uh, How you doing? I, I, have, yeah. I actually have a private driveway that is right. off their road. And these guys are here, my neighbors, the Greenies. And uh, so definitely would like to understand what we went to the project of creating. Right. Well, and, and how it affect the private driveway abutting. So you know, I wonder if our new foreman. A process. If our new foreman could meet with them and show them, because it sounds like nobody's got anything ready for us to approve tonight, because all of them didn't do anything. And, well, the night we had the site walk, nobody was there to talk to us about it. Okay. And, um, I but, know, yeah. I didn't know that I was did, part of the site did walk. Did somebody was. apply for it? Because that was a big... Well, somebody was, didn't contact us to yeah. apply for it. Because mm -hmm. I don't know who it was. Yeah. 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 And I wouldn't have been contacted with the issue. Right. Because it's quite a process. One thing you have to, it's got to be what, 50 foot wide? But it's uh, the thing is, too, you have to deed us land on both sides, plus a place to put the snow. And Somebody's, the culverts have got to be fixed a certain size. And There's a lot to it. Trees cut so that don't hit the plows. I mean, we've got that information. Okay. But we can make sure you have that information. Right. But I also think if you meet with a foreman and maybe he'd meet you out there to look it over and see what he thinks. Yeah. If you Just want like, it to be town road. I, I agree that with all of these here, like Blanche Road there. That ledge we're talking about, you know, he's gonna work with the guys on having to plow it and maybe go out and um, meet and check. Yeah, I mean it's mostly that there's other neighbors that aren't here right now that are part of Shoulin Road. Mm -hmm. I'm not part of Shoulin Road. I came as an interested party, being yeah. a you know, neighbor of theirs and trying to figure out what's going on. I don't know how it would affect my property deeding 50 feet from the middle of the road to my side of the road would be cutting into an important part of my property. But it's 25 feet either side of the center line of the road. Yeah. So the determination of the center line determines how far the 25 feet goes out. The road width itself. Obviously, I'm interested in how that would affect yeah. the right. Joe's Pond Road property. Yeah. Well, anybody that's interested in getting those the criteria, we can give it to you. And, um, and like Brian says, we're happy to have our road foreman meet with you and, uh, and let you know what it really takes. It's quite a bit. It's been, you know, I've been doing this a while, and I learned a lot about it. I was well, like, wow, yeah, so much you didn't know. Unless you I do that every day. Yeah. We actually were here 30 years ago. So yeah, I remember. So um, I understand that I don't blame them for the neighbors for trying this. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming. Um, any further discussion on that? Abstain. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? No. no. Motion failed. Next, new business. Discuss the rejoining of LCPC, the Moyle County Planning Commission. You want to bring it up, Chris? Sure. So we talked about this uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, one of the primary reasons for joining or to bringing up the topic of rejoining LCPC. Uh, is one of the primary reasons is going after a designated downtown weekend. The other thing is I strongly believe that we are better off working with partners. Um, there is information over here around designated downtowns for those that are interested. So that's kind of the crux of it. Um, I know that there was an article in the paper and we discussed that in the previous meeting. So. Uh, just to get the, the motion started, I would make a motion to, that we, Morristown rejoins Moyle County Planning Commission. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second, and let's open it up for discussion. <laughs> sure. <laughs> just as much as I do. Anybody else? I'll do it. I'll have it. 
Luckily, you can have this one. No, I'll start it out with, uh, I'd really like to see our board be able to work with the LCPC on common ground for the benefit of the town. Um, there's been a lot of bad blood, you might say, in the past. And um, I'd like to have it all go away. I'd like to forget about the past, move forward in a, in a professional way. I mean, we all have people we don't like working with, including myself, but you work with it for the benefit of the business of the town or who it is. And um, that's how I feel. And uh, I, know, I know I've got uh, some other folks on the board who feel the same way. Um, I think, uh, you know, in the past, we got to a point where we didn't feel like we could work together for a number of reasons, and um, you know, that's personalities and the dynamics of working together and the fact that Morristown, for the most part, is very self-sufficient. We've got an excellent planner and an excellent community coordinator, and we don't always need the resources other towns do, like Hyde Park and Johnson and Cambridge and all of them, you know, in, in the local area, who don't have town planners. And this is my opinion, by the way. And um, because we have resources and we can do a lot by ourselves, and even since we, we pulled away from the LCPC, we've still gone forward with a lot of development and we've, we've really done well, you know. But I do think there's a lot of value in this downtown designation. If you read the copies, read through it, you know, the tax credits alone are very, very much way make it worth it. Um, I feel like we should, um, agree to get along and um, not do any he said she said stuff and not do any um, I guess I'll put it bluntly backstabbing and that kind of thing um, I'd like to start it out uh, Chris and I for a while have been meeting with uh, Tasha Wallace and Kayla Magoon um, multiple times and sat down had good discussions about it and uh, wanted to clear the air and sort of forget the past and um, set it up so we have perhaps two of us on the LCPC board um, in, instead of who is on there before. That way we're sort of hands-on. If anything happens, we're right on it. Um, we talked about Chris and maybe Judy and possibly down the road maybe Tom Snip, you know, or, or somebody like that from the village board. Uh, what we're doing right now is just doing things from the select board side and, and I feel like we should really make an effort to try to work together. If, if we can't, at least we said we tried to do it. You know, we tried to work it out. I know a year or two ago now, Erica said, you know, can't, why can't we just grow up and, and get, you know, work together? And it's been very challenging and for a number of reasons, and I'm not going to put blame on anybody, but I know that uh, for the most part, if we all, all do our own thing and don't be too much in each other's business other than doing this. You should be able to work together on a professional level. And um, you don't have to like somebody, but you know, for the benefit of Morristown, we need to work together. That's my two cents, but I'll, I'll let you see what you say, Brian. Well, I agree with you. My part thing is the downtown's an important part, but another thing is I like to see the whole town work together, all boards if they can. And I think we can. I'd, I'd like to see us try again, but we can't, you can't come in, they can't, and we can't. Is well, they did this two years ago, and I, it's I'll start new and try it. And my thoughts are is Bob and Chris, you know, if you have any problems, come to them and talk to us because. You can call us, <laughs> yeah. and they do. I, I, mean, can cure, I mean, it sounds as though the select board is looking to take on the, the business of working with the planning commission, the LCPC. Um, I, why can't our Morristown planning person do that? I mean, if that person can't work, if those two entities can't work together, I mean, that seems ridiculous. I, that's what they're that's what they're there to do, right? This planning person and this planning organization, they're planning organizations, they should be able to work together. Why do you folks have to do that? I, I don't disagree with you and I to be quite honest, um, I don't have a lot of time to do this and um, uh, I don't 
have a desire to be engaged in a long term. I would think that that would be in the planning uh, individual's job description. Yeah, you know, I think I don't know if we're going to make any decisions on that tonight if this even passes. Um, but I would love to move in a direction where there's representation from some. I commend you both for you know being willing but to take that on, but I personally don't think that that's your responsibility. Right. I think the the idea behind it was to try to make a, some sort of bridge. Um, yeah. With the ultimate goal of being what, going back to where the, the, the person responsible of the town can do that? I There's think various representation on that board in various capacities, so... I think what we're looking to do, Jamie, is if we were to rejoin, would be to clearly define the roles that are needed that we can't meet such that there is an overlap and there's not overreach. That's where the hard feelings came from before, yeah. is that we have staff here who are very capable of doing much of what LCPC would like to do for us, but we're not looking for them to do that. We have somebody on staff that does that for us. Yeah. So in order to eliminate the tension, we look at the, the points where there's intersecting yeah. interests and we try and clear those intersections. And I think that's what um, Bob and Chris have been trying to do is try and designate uh, a scope yeah. within which all parties can work and it may not be working together. We may not need a collaborative effort on everything that comes in front of the town for development, but there may be pieces we do need to work on and that they're trying to identify that and put it into a structure that both LCPC and the, the select board can accept. The one, the one thing I want to add to that though is there, I believe is a bit of misinformation out there is that we, even though we are not at the table at LCPC right now, doesn't mean we're exempt from some of their oversight. We still are subject to LCP oversight, even though we are not a affiliated a with them. Member. At either so that is some pretty big misunderstanding that's currently out there. Paul, go ahead. If that's the case, what's holding them up from approving our application to be a downtown organization? Well, they basically told us that they would work with us to help us get it back, you know. Well, you just said that we're subject to them as it is. That's so right. Why not That's right. do it yeah. without right. going any further? Right. Well, we can't, we can't get the downtown designation without having them sign off on it. So and why don't we get letter of support from them? Right. Let's be really clear about it. That's we don't need them to sign off on our application. Oh, right. All we need is say they are supporting the town of Morristown right. to becoming a designated downtown or to keep our designated downtown. Right. So from the way the way I look at that is why wouldn't we want to be at the table and part of the discussion? We are a vital part of this county. We're the 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 social services hub, we're the largest town. Um, it's for me, it's important to be part of that conversation and, and play in the sandbox nicely. I, I just, I struggle to understand why we wouldn't want to be there. Well, I'll say something. I want to be blunt with what I'm going to say. We've got a person, I think, in this town that could do it without any help from them. And two people. We don't need them. But I'm willing to work with them. But I tried it before. I sat right here and told them. Don't do it. And so, as far as I'm concerned, this is the last time. If it don't work this time, then I, next time I'll just say go. And my opinion is, then I go out to the state and say, state, why can't we get our own if we got a person that's just as good as they are, probably better? That's my opinion. So. Well, I, I mean, I went to a little small county manager with there, and then Todd up overhead here. My, my personal feeling is that we're Eat pizza and talk. They need grinders. Nothing got accomplished in those meetings. I, I was there for two hours. I went to three meetings. I never went back. And you got a free meal though, didn't you? No, I went. I did No, I, I went there to go there to see what's going on in the town. And and, uh, and, and I say, come on board. I hope they don't. I don't. I think we got a guy here that does a hell of a job. We don't need them coming here and start changing rules. And because I know for a fact they were trying to put down businesses from getting commercial uh, permits in that town behind back, me being one, and I found out, and I confronted them, and they lied to me, and I brought the person to me with me, and they, we, we confronted them. And, 
and, that, and I, I don't want to have that same predicament. They're going to come in here and start controlling what they want us to do here. You're saying no, but when they get their feet in the door again, uh, they're going to be right back. And we'll see what happens. Well, there's some other things too, like you might talk a bit about some of the highway stuff that they they can help us with. You know, the the flood stuff and the, there's benefit in having them do it, and we don't need to do it. There, yeah, there was, there, was, there, there was a hazard mitigation plan that I need, and they are the logical organization to do that. Um, but there's really no vice out there else that can do that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the one thing that I look at. Realistically, could I do it myself? Yes, but do I have the time to do it? No. You know, so I, I think that's the, the big take on that. But we have used them in the past. You know, Trisha did the, what is it, the byways? Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's the, the hazard mitigation <clears throat> plan is something very, very similar to that, where they were the right organization to do the byways type project. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, I, mean, I think Eric said it perfectly, is trying to figure out the um, where there's overreach and oversetting boundaries. <clears throat> so figuring out how we work together, and that's part of the reason um, <coughs> We thought it might be helpful to have select board members initially on that board just so we can start to navigate that. Um, but Gary. it does, it, it's a, in many aspects, it's besides uh, achieving the downtown designation, it's, uh, it can be somewhat symbolic as far as trying to work together. So. I can say that I've received calls from two developers that are in this community. Live and work. They, uh, I'm not going to give their names because I don't want to look like I'm speaking on their behalf. I will paraphrase what they gave me: is that they did not see the benefit of the downtown designation. Um, they, uh, one in fact, has uh, is developing here in the village and went through the activity process without the downtown designation. Did not seem to think that the process was all that complicated. Uh, others have had prior experience with LCPC, uh, it was not positive. It was expensive. Uh, they, they, these folks did not see the benefit in our rejoining LCPC. So I'll just, I'll put that out there. That's what I received for information. And uh, I'm withholding my, my opinion on whether we do this or not until I see what the final product is from Bob and Chris meeting with LCPC to come back and explain as I've said, what, what, are the, what are the new rules going forward? Where, where are we going to be um, in the process such that we don't have our staff member wasting time only to have his work undermined by something that comes out of LCPC office? Uh, I, I don't want our staff spinning their wheels for nothing. So I'm looking for, for whatever, what the final agreement is that you folks come up with along with the input from developers, homeowners, whoever else has to do with this process. And I'd like to say all of our employees, because all of the employees have had trouble with them. Dan tried real, real hard, and he, he just didn't work. So. What's, the fee? What's the fee we got to pay? A few thousand. I don't yeah, it's, it's a few thousand. Five thousand? Forty-five hundred or something. I think I think we're better off where we are, quite frankly. That's my opinion too. Just a second. Gary, you have a comment. Yeah, I was just wondering if you can draw a line in the sand or if it is all or nothing. Right. I think before the select board should even vote on this, they should have a draft proposal agreed upon by the select board and LCPC. I mean, are they going to let the town just work on the designated downtown, which, uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure what good it does. Uh, you can get grant money, but probably 75 or 80 percent of the time, it costs you more to get that grant money than it does if you just go ahead and do the work yourself. Uh, it's you, true. You got a lot more rules and regulations for the way you got a lot more oversight. You got more engineers involved. You got this. Uh, it's just it makes it a lot more complicated. But 
I mean, if everybody's hired a stop on getting the downtown designation back, I'm I'm still not clear as to why it was a 10 to 8 vote against a letter of support for Morristown getting their downtown designation. And like I say, if, if it'll do that much good, which I don't see where it will, but maybe it will, and keep them out of the rest of the town's business, then maybe it'll work. But I know a couple instances that I was involved in to, with the DRB. Uh, RL Valley wanted to put in a big truck fill-in terminal up here. They came, the DRB went on a sidewalk on January, I think it was January morning. It was 15 to 18 below zero that morning. We were all there. RL Valley sent a truck, he probably was in route anyway. Came from Montreal down. Did the turning radius. They had every had the small plowed off out there where they're gonna put it. They had it all staked out, did their due diligence. Everything worked fine. We approved it. And then sometime later, LCPC decided that it was a regional, that it would affect the region by having that truck fuel station there. I remember not that quite, not quite sure how that would be a big detriment to the whole area, but apparently it was in their eyes. Marshall Airport designed a nice new terminal building down there. Everything was fine. LCPC stepped in and wanted a traffic study done out of the airport. Now, I don't know how many people are aware of what this new expansion at the airport does. It does not create any bigger planes to be able to land there. It makes it safer for the ones that can already land there. And by putting this big terminal, nice terminal was all designed and ready to go. And I think Spo Aviation ended up spending in the neighborhood of twenty thousand dollars to do a traffic study just for left turn traffic going out of the airport. It just you know, things like that. Maybe they're warranted, maybe they're not. I, those are just two instances. They're all three with the ten to eight against the left. So I think those are those are great examples because those are all examples where they currently have oversight in any way. So again, I'll bring up my point is why wouldn't we want to be at the table, having those discussions, having our voice and being there earlier in those conversations. There, by us not being at the table, doesn't we were at the get, table we were during the table. all those conversations. So, okay, and again, going forward, if we have the ability and we have a good relationship, why, I, I don't understand why that isn't a positive thing. Um, it, it may not change the outcome on any of them, but at least we're being at the table. I think it's dangerous to say that by us not being at the table and not joining gets us out of those regulations and oversight because it does not. I'm not, I'm not saying it does. I'm saying that I think you ought to have a draft plan before you vote to get some idea of what you're voting on. I mean, just a blanket. Yes, we're going to join up. Like but you can you can join under certain conditions. You don't have to have it drawn up first. Yeah, I, I'm not. You know, you can you can do that in a condition that we can work things out. Maybe if the condition is we can't work it out, so then we won't join. But we can go ahead and say, you know, we'll try to work with you if, if we can come up with a plan to do it. I, I, you know, I, yeah, agree, I know, Gary. I agree 100. Yeah. Everybody should try to work together. It I should make a life smoother for everybody. Yeah, that's largely what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that, but I, all I'm saying is that uh, I think we need to know going forward yeah. before you make a decision what, what the outcome is going to be. Right. Well, the tough thing, I, I know those, those three instances you talked about, I was very familiar with all of those. And, um, you know, no matter how, what they say, they're an arm of the state. LCPC is an arm of the state, and they have regulatory authority over us to some degree. There's not much we can do about it. Unfortunately. Um, well, we are going to pay. Yeah. Right, Gary? Yeah. Um, I wish you were still there so I could call you up and say, what's going on, Gary? 
Well, we'll get you back in there again. Well, that's all. Airport is going to another project that's involved now. There's one there in October, way October. Yeah, it's nothing to do with the general. No. Paul, you had a comment. You know, the downtown designation is a small part of how they affect us. It is. And I appreciate the fact that you took some extra time to talk to Tasha about her side of the story. But are you going to take some time to talk to the people here that were involved in uh, an organization as trustees so that you can get a total and clear idea of what we are going to do with? And I'll, I'll give you an example. Last year, we put about four or five months of meetings in place to revise the, the uh, planning, I mean, the, the uh, planning zoning meeting regulations and we sent out emails every time we had a meeting and it was on the agenda Tasha got those emails her organization got those emails and at the end of about four months of work we had a proposal a proposal for the changes and in the drafts that Todd put together and mailed out to everybody we got a three page report from the Long County Planning just tearing the whole thing apart because it wasn't complete. And I got I a copy of it here. And it would have taken us another four months to complete that proposal, to make it a final. One of the things they wanted was another map so they could compare that map with the old map if those proposals went through. Why not have the map developed and paid for after the proposals were completed? Uh, it's really disappointing. Not one person from the Royal County Planning came to any of the meetings that we emailed them about that we were going to discuss this thing. Not one meeting did they attend. Uh, I don't think that bodes well for our feelings about it. If you're going to move forward, you need to spend about 95% of your time figuring out what the problem is before you put together a plan. Mm -hmm. I believe maps are one of the benefits, correct, Doug? The ability to do more maps? Yeah, I did the last one. Uh, that one was up. It's cheaper than do so. so. I think that cost me $900. Okay, any other comments? I know I talked, Jim Levinsky talked about how joining, the town joining would help his project. Um, Just the Mono County. Um, yeah, I can't remember, I don't remember the acronym, what the initials are. <coughs> Some of mine. Is it LHP? What is it? LHP? Yeah, the Mono Housing Partnership, I believe. Yeah. So close to the other one. Yeah. All right, any further discussion before we vote on this? So what is it we're actually voting on? What was the what was the motion to start with? Rejoining. Rejoin rejoining. Just a flat rejoining. No no working I thought there was a work product coming out of this. No. Well, that could I think be, we had to wait. That could be you know it. Presented as part of the motion. This motion is just to rejoin. So can you put that in, can you amend the motion yet? You can amend the motion. Amend it or table it and come back with well, we got maybe some motion. kind of We can't table it, we got to act on it. And then we we can... just tabled one a few minutes ago, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> no, not without making the motion, did we? Once we made a motion, we did it. Okay, so one of these. Yeah, go ahead. I guess we're, well, there was an article in the New Citizen here about two issues ago where it looked like it was uh, promising that there was a discussion going on between the town and the LCPC. So um, <clears throat> overall, we're in favor of returning back to where we were before we left. We had uh, people who represented <coughs> the town they were uh, representative 
some sort of um, mediation between a representative of this board and their board. Come up with a plan or guidelines. Kind of, I don't know what that exactly looks like, um, but I think that part uh, is really important. I, you know, I will say I have heard other sides of it and I have seen uh, the interactions. Um, I am cautiously optimistic because <laughs> uh, I do understand the challenges of, um, even over the past couple years, of trying to navigate this conversation uh, and the historical perspective as well. So I think uh, if a representative of this board and a representative of their board could uh, kind of hash things out and mediate, I think that would be. Um, Time well spent. Do you think that the, the the withdrawal of the town from that board kind of um, made an impression? Absolutely. I had two legislators call me like within a week. So it made an impression though on the LCPC. Yeah. Both ways. Well, you're gonna have you're talking about having a meeting. You're gonna have. I like that. Yes. I'd like to say I appreciate the fact that LCPC did not send representatives tonight. I don't believe we have any in the, in the audience. Correct. Because that allowed for um, our citizenry to give a free flow of information without rebuttals and back and forth. It becomes more of a courtroom than it does a select board meeting. So I appreciate the fact we've had this free flow of information, pro and con. Um, and I understand fully the intent of Chris and Bob and their intent in meeting with them and trying to bridge that gap that we have. I think I think I would either the mediation piece, which I'm more in favor of now than it was two years ago, Bob. Mm -hmm. um, but I would like to see I, I'd like to see an assurance either in writing or a, uh, something here in this meeting from LCPC that says that they understand where we're coming from, what it is we're trying to accomplish and that they'll work with us. So they kind of understand the reasons why the, the town pulled out in the first place. If there's no understanding of that yet, then there's no forging forward. If they don't understand why we pulled out to begin with. Oh, so they understand why. I mean, it's all he right. said, she said, you know, it's like back and forth. I think it goes along with what Eric said, people overreaching with their, their responsibilities. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing I would say to that, Eric, is we can get out pretty easily. I mean, that's the Understood. I, I understand that. I just only takes a motion. So how do you want to do this? You want to vote on it and do turn it down? Do you want to table it? I thought we said we can't. I, I just assume right. table it for now because I do get think. More information. Yes. You guys can go and meet with them and I do agree with Buckwheat, it ought to be two instead of just one. They'll want to be three, because then it's called a meeting. Three, 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 three. Yeah. We don't have a quorum, but yeah, yeah. good. Three would be, though. One guy that's one person that all the answers. True. One thing I, I think and I'd like to have said it during that meeting is, don't call us, we'll call you. 
In other words, That's fair. Do, if we need them, <laughs> if we need them, we'll work with them. If they need us, they can call us and we'll work with them. That would be simple but, but effective, yes. Yes, well, okay. That's, what I, that's the way I feel about it. We, we got a, two nice, good people here. Again, three. I mean, yeah, and I don't want them. I don't want them pushing, pushing them around. They got enough to do without that. I just don't want to take the paper again, but I'll have lingo on all about a lot of times. I mean, every week or something about them all complaining about the town and all that. I 100 percent agree. That's what we said. Air of the dirty yeah. Yep. Yep. I knew we'd finally agree on something, but we. <laughs> Well. If you guys do draft some sort of agreements, the important thing really when rubber meets the road is the Act 250 comments they make. They don't really have regulatory control, but Act 250 is very interested in their comments and will generally make conditions out of their comments. So if you can just craft some sort of decision uh, where then were agreements where maybe those comments before a major project in the town come before the select board before the major Act 250, that will cover us. That's the yeah. important thing. Yeah. Those comments, are, nothing else really matters, those comments are the big thing. That's why this hole's in the ground list where Arnold Valley should have truck evil places and they don't. Right. That makes sense. So right. I'd like to see tonight this no pass, hopefully, and you come back. That would give the feeling of whether the next meeting, when we discuss it, whether we should or shouldn't for us. I'm fine with the table for now. Yeah. You make a motion to the table. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. So pass. Next, delinquent taxes. All right, Sarah. Buckwheat's name is not on there, is it? My name's all on everything. Should account for it 
so that there's not, oh, you didn't apply it correctly here, I didn't apply it there, or this he said, she said, uh, oh, I paid them, I didn't, I paid them. Um, so it's always consistent in the same place. Is one thing that he does that's very different than past practice. And the other is that um, he charges hourly rate. So he charges $75 per demand letter um, that he sends out initially, which was what the other uh, attorneys did too. Um, and he said about 60% of the time, just that legal demand letter will, will get the taxes. Then after that, it's um, hourly rate, which is about eight, he's guessing eight to $900 per parcel. Um, so I've um, given you a spreadsheet of where we are as of this afternoon. Um, actually, the date had Friday, but I updated it as soon as it came in today. Anyways, um, the first four are balances that um, doing the math, you would, if we went with him, you would collect quite a bit. You would collect quite a bit. Because um, we can only bill um, the the property owner 15% of the um, balance, the tax, the balance of the taxes due. We can only bill up to 15% in legal fees. So if we spend a thousand dollars on legal fees, but they only owe hundred dollars, we can't we can't collect from them um, the difference. So the the second chunk are peak, are balances that um, would meet the threshold that you would make the at least a seventy-five dollar demand letter back, but maybe you would not recoup all your legal fees. Um, the the third chunk is ones that you um, they are property owners that are landed properties, but they it's very small balances they owe. The fourth is unlanded mobile homes, and that last one is the la uh, is a business personal property that's actually. Um, <coughs> two or three years old, they no longer exist anymore. I've actually mentioned it to the BCA a couple times. Maybe we need to abate it because they didn't have a tax bill last year and they're not gonna have a tax bill anymore. They no longer exist. So um, they're, that's gonna be pretty impossible to collect. What um, you can do with business personal property is put a lien against it in the land records, but they don't owe any property so nobody's gonna can we just write it off? Um, the, the BCA, BCA should it. write it off yeah. next time there was an abatement meeting. Yeah. If there were select board members um, present that had that view. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's um, probably five that have the view. Um, <coughs> so why is this, why so is this broken a, down this way? That uh, balance is over 500? Because um, of cost associated. Well, I know, but it should be like 1,000 or something like that, not 500, you know? Because 500 up to 5,000 is that's a big chunk, you know. <coughs> big difference. Anything to add that I missed? Well, I, you know, I think that the, just in the time that I've been here, we've had two lawsuits all involving <clears throat> to make my taxes. So insurance doesn't cover it, so we're kind of on our own for legal fees. It's a very, very complicated process. I've known or worked with Jim Barlow for a number of years, and I've always valued his consultation and the opinion that he offers the towns out there. <coughs> from my perspective, I don't think we could be in better hands. I mean, if this is what he does. He has a private practice that's centered all along, all around municipal law. The LCT is also the municipal attorney for South Burlington um, by himself for a number of years. <clears throat> what I've talked to Sarah about is that I think it makes sense for that those, those first two groups of properties to at least send out the demand letters mm -hmm. um, and then go back and <coughs> see how well that works for you where you're at that point in time. The, the mobile homes have been a nightmare, I think, for everybody to do because the odds that you can get anything out of them is slim to none and you spend a lot of time. If you end up owning it and it's in a trailer park, then you also have the liabilities of the lot fees and everything else. And you have to do eviction. We've been down that road once before. There are other avenues that Sarah, as a liquid tax collector, could pursue. Number one, if they ever decide to move the trailer off the lot, then they have to pay the taxes due at that point in time. 
or we could do a small um, claims court to, to get those things. Personal <coughs> property stuff, I think, is an issue really more for the BCA because there's, there's no sense spending any money trying to collect something from somebody that doesn't exist. Would, would letters go out to all these people? I think the first two groups is what you should send your demand letters to. Well, what, but 75 bucks for the other ones, why not? Um, before, because I think our experience with mobile homes, <coughs> you're not going to get it. You're, you're, you're better off just letting Sarah handle that as to like a tax collector and not spending money on it. Is it, are they, um, this is just this year? Yeah. Right now. Um, no. no, this is all balances. I can buy, <coughs> Nemrick, our software has this awful um, reporting. So some, this one has, you know, three different bills. Some of, I just combine them to simplify for, previous years. for you to see balances. Mm -hmm. I mean, so some of these people have been not paying their taxes, or these are just for like num a number of years? Um, there's very few that's more than one year. Um, we are pretty strict. Um, we don't really make payment arrangements. I don't know if that's something you want to change. Um, we um, only will work with um, making arrangements until we turn everything in August over um, for collection. Because if you drag it out, then there's a whole other tax bill that they're going to get. And it doesn't really help to um, have more than one year. So there is. You know, one account, one account um, that's in redemption anyways, it was sold at tax sale and they have until December to um, pay for it. The majority that owe a few years are the mobile homes. They're always going to be the problems. And it, honestly, we just sold one at tax sale. We did everything correctly and then I was sued and threatened. We spent probably. The police involved and we spent way more than we would Right. pay for an attorney to get it dropped and he agreed that I, I had done everything correctly. That's a lesson. They just didn't like. Mm -hmm. Well, rough calculation, there's nine homes, nine mobile homes listed totaling in the ballpark of $2,100 in unpaid taxes. Well, it was the two above it though too, right? I mean, those yeah. may be worth sending them. <coughs> Some, the, the two above it, the small balances, they have, um, th those are landed. Those, um, I think, might be worth sending the $75. Herbie, Herbie and Muriel are both dead. Right, true. So this is going to be an estate if, if anything right. happens to it. So that's not going to come anywhere. Right. What do you guys want to do? What are, what are, <coughs> do you know what other towns are doing? No, everybody's trying to figure out what Years past, there would be a town in Johnson. It was Bill Milo for years and years. He was the town tax collector. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, he would collect an eight percent fee um, off the the taxes he collected, but that's gone gone by the by because of lawsuits, legal, all that's so complicated to deal with. This. So, I'm in favor of uh, of another law firm taking this over for us. If that's uh, if that's the most efficient, the safest way to keep us out of legal problems. I agree. So you're recommending that the letters, uh, the attorneys submit letters to the top, sort of, to the top uh, two, top two, and then, um, and then he can follow up with them if necessary. So my understanding is he sent me a sample letter. He would um, draft up a proposal that I need to bring back to the board. Today's just a conversation. Um, and if you don't want to go this route, then I'll investigate another route and come back to you. But if this is the route that you want to go, then I would go back to him. I would get him the information and he would draw up a contract. Actually, between you and him, because I am appointed <coughs> by you, I'm not an elected delinquent tax collector. So it's, the direction comes from you, not from me. So do we have any rebound to put this out to bid? It's like any other contractual piece? Um, that we do. The problem is, is we can't, you know, the, I know. We're looking for it. Actually, this is probably a great example of a sole source. Yes. This is his expertise. I was waiting for you to say sole source. That was happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we've, we've used different attorneys in the past. And, you know, and if there's anybody I think that, you know, that once again, this is one of his specialties, you know, is municipal law. Okay. And um, so I, mean, I, I think this is a perfect example of a, a sole source for us to do yeah. it, to get it done right. Because if we do, once again, 
end up in court over a tax sale. It's on our dime for the legal fees to do this. So it really behooves the towns to do it correctly, even with the last one that we had. You know, we did everything, that was right, we did everything exactly perfect. Um, but there's one little, there's one person out there that's a little glitch in the system. We've seen it thrown out because um, I think there was an example somebody used that, you know, a judge said, well, did you really go try to hand deliver this tax bill to them? And the answer was no. And it got tossed out, you know, at the, at the court level. So it's, it's really one of those things where if you're taking somebody's property and selling it to somebody else, judges are going to be extremely, extremely picky. Um, so I think it really behooves us, you know, from the broader sense to, to do somebody like Jim that is very, very meticulous and, and well-versed in that work. So do we need a motion for that? Yes, please, to, to hire him as a sole source attorney for the tax. I make a motion that we hire James <coughs> Barlow, PLC, as a sole source, uh, the attorney to do our delinquent taxes. Um, I would look to enter into a contract no longer than two years. That gives him time to get past and current. And then if someone else comes forth that says, hey, we would like to do this, then it, the sole source goes away. We end up with a bidding process. But I don't foresee that happening. But <laughs> anyway. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? So I think the contract would be year to year. Would it be year to year? That's fine to me. If he's good with that, that's fine. I just want to give him enough time to cash I think four I'm, years taxes. Yeah, I think I, my understanding is I'm going to give him the list of um, properties, mm -hmm. and the contract's going to be just for those properties for that year. And um, my, my thought would be to enter in a contract to send those 75 demand letters and then see where we're at and then enter in a new contract to see which ones really make sense to yeah. go <coughs> Will you need a signature from all board members, a board member, or from Dan? You can authorize me to sign the contract. Yes. Yes. Oops. So would that be part of the motion? Yes. <laughs> do a link. Yeah, Making all sorts of notes on it. What? No, I don't need a fact. Oh, that's um, uh, down there. The, yeah. uh, the, the letter. Oh, it's, yeah, the, the yeah. sample one. <coughs> I passed it. Page. So I have a motion. Can I have a second? So the motion includes allowing Dan to sign on behalf of the board the contract? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, point fire award. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. As long as Denny's not here, oh, he's here. Welcome, Denny. Hello. Long time to see, buddy. Hello. How are you? All right. I make a motion. He's it. <laughs> this is your chance. If Second. you want me to do it, don't sign this paper. Do you want to do it? I'm still doing it. That's cool. That doesn't say do you want to do it. <laughs> doesn't matter. I'll still do it until I can get some other sucker to do it. I wouldn't know who else to call at this point. This is the only number I know. Uh, it's been a long time. Yeah. If you're willing to do it, continue to do it, then we have no issue with it. Yeah. It is a service you provide to the community because if we don't have it, then we can't do our backyard bonfire. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> but I've had a couple show interest, but I'll be a little bit. Another 10 years or so? Well, that's for another. Yeah. Yep. That'll give him time to warm up to the idea. Go ahead, Brian. Go ahead, Brian. Make the motion. I made I did already. You made it? Oh, yes. I seconded it. Oh, there we go. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. No problem. I just need that letter back. That was an easy one. Huh? That was an easy one. Motion's it passed, by the way. Easy. I just. Thanks, Denny. I know you're paid really well for it. So. Oh, yeah. We got a raise from the state. Right. Uh, so go to the training. Yeah. Their voice. 
Uh-huh. Their voice. Yeah. <laughs> it works. All right, next. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Approved sale of surplus stretchers. Bill. Hi, good evening. How are um, you? So we had previously declared surplus three stretchers that are just taking, literally just taking up space in the ambulance bay. The strikers? Uh, the striker. I'm sorry? Striker. Yeah, the three, uh, three strikers, one power cot and two manual cots. Uh, put it out to some of the medical surplus companies. We've gotten one response for $7,500 for the three of them. Uh, and if we accept that tonight, they'll be out of there this week. Is that a pretty uh, good offer, you think? Yes, sir. Yeah, I would recommend that. I make a motion we approve the sale of the surplus stretchers for $7,500. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Number five, discuss and approve social media policy. Chris, you want to take a stab at that? Uh, so Dan presented us with this draft uh, social media policy several months ago. June, something like that, maybe somewhere around there. Uh, and the, the kind of the point or the idea of uh, adopting a social media policy was a couple things. We have we use social media, so there should be something governing the use of uh, that communication tool. Um, and the other is, in my personal opinion, is I would love to encourage the utilization of social media. Uh, it's a it's how a lot of folks want to be communicated with. Uh, we have a Facebook page that's being utilized. We now have a Twitter account with uh, that you know, thanks to the previous owner, built up a huge following that I think would be a really valuable communication tool for this town to use. Uh, so this just sets in forth some basic uh, guidelines and understandings around the use of social media as uh, the town of Morristown. And this is based on a draft uh, uh, VLCT policy, if Correct. I'm not mistaken. It's a good place to start, I think it's a good to have one. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion we approve this model policy. Second. Any second? Any further discussion? Yeah, yes, please, because I think <laughs> it's it's not quite as simple as, as approving this policy. Mm -hmm. There's these decisions that the board has yep. to make. Mm -hmm. um, and the first and foremost is we, we have we have Facebook, we have Twitter. First and foremost is do you allow people to comment, members of the public, to comment on this. So, you know, <coughs> so <coughs> Trisha, Erica, or somebody post something on that right now, it's kind of a free-for-all for people to, to comment back. So do you want to do that? Or do you want to do oh, somebody that's moderating those discussions that has the authority to remove those posts? And if they're going to remove those posts, what's the criteria to do it? So those are really, really important decisions to make. So it's, it's more than just approving it. Because those are decisions I've tried to put in where you guys could put in some of those comments that are italicized there. But those are decisions that the board has to make relative to this policy. Um, so it's, it's, it's a, a lot more complicated, I think. It's, it's, it's very much because the, one of the big things is if, if you are going to allow people to comment on your social media comments, the public, not violating their first right amendments to free speech. So take that into consideration for the decision that you're making here today on how you want to handle those things because I think that's the most important thing about this policy um, is how do you handle comments from the public on your social media accounts. I mean, if you have a Twitter account, obviously people can comment on it. Or if you have Facebook, people can comment on it. And it's how those comments are to be. And who's going to have the authority to, you know, police those comments, or is it just one person or is it two person? You know, you know and I, I think I could probably make a case where it should probably be two people um, that would review a comment that was questionable rather than putting it all on one person. Um, I, sometimes I think it's really, really good to have two sets of eyes to look at something like that. Mm -hmm. well, on, on section five, page six, there's the two uh, platforms, the government speech forum and the limited public forum. Mm -hmm. 
and the government speech forms are um, the platforms that don't allow for any public comments whatsoever. Correct. So we've decided to do that one. We don't have to worry about anybody um, Correct. making comments whatsoever. Um, and the second one is the limited. I had some questions that you just brought them up. Um, who would be responsible for that? Is that someone in the um, in the town office that has to be responsible for that? I, I think the only person, if you're going to do a limited one, has to start putting me off now. So you have time in your day to be following. Well, it's not that I follow. I think it's you know, somebody has to make me aware that there's a comment. Because generally speaking, I don't check the Facebook page right. every day. You know, it's not something I look at. You know, I can. You know, Erica sees things sometimes, or Trish will see, and they'll, they'll post me, and I think, you know, the staff would have to help me police that to a certain degree, or even the board. Is it necessary? We have front porch forum. We have open meetings. Is it really necessary for us to have the ability for people to make comments on these, on these platforms? That's... I think so. I mean, I've, I've been watching it. I, I respond frequently to people that make comments on things, and... You know, it's no different than a personal Facebook account. If you've got the account and somebody makes a really, you know, rude or obscene or vulgar comment, as a user of that account, you can delete the comment. You know, I think that's appropriate. Um, I, I always watch those, those posts, too, that the town does. And I think it's fine to have two people do it, but I think it's also, you know, really good to let people comment. You know, they can, they can call you on the phone and talk to you personally. They should be able to make a comment, you know. And you do, I mean, you get notification. If you make a post, and if everybody in the Facebook world understands, if somebody makes a comment, you get a notification. So you see it. You know, you see it if there's 26 of them. And so you can read it. It's not like you've got to just stay all day looking at it. You'll, you'll see it. You know, it's just managing managing that social media platform. It's not that hard. I think, I think uh, maybe we can put something in with, with uh, you know, vulgar language or obscene language or something like that. Criteria is here. It's really yeah, I know, I know, I read that. But um, if we can just say that the, the person that we assigned to to handle the, the Twitter account or the Facebook account, I think it's been pretty good. I think uh, it's not too hard to manage that. I just, I don't, I don't know. I just, yeah. I just, I think asking people to take on that responsibility in the town offices is asking them a lot. It might be something we look at and we decide that yes, we're going to open it up to comments and let it, let's see how it works and then, and then revisit it in a couple of right. months. Because it, I just think it's an extra added responsibility that doesn't necessarily need to be taken on. What do you think, Erica, about it? As of right now, people are allowed to comment on our page and I don't think, I mean, we've had a couple of incidents and I've brought them to Dan and you know, we addressed it then. Uh, and I think we already have invitations on there that we don't allow for. You don't feel like there's an extra added burden to? No, because I get an email every time someone comments or I get a notification that there's something on there. So if it started becoming burdensome, you feel comfortable coming back and saying, hey, we, we need to take a look at this. Again. We could shut it off, right? Yeah. If you have to go back to the floor to make a motion to, to make it into a, a report. Yeah, this is three. Three. So I wondered, there's this whole list of things that you can't do, but is it, that's not on there where the people are doing it. Do they know it? Probably not, but I, yeah, I don't know that we, we could probably put it on our, our website or our Facebook page or something like that to let people know. Right. Um, but I think that the, the thing is, then I think if we, we have those instances, then we let people know. You know, just like anything else, you give them a warning, you can go, hey, you know, this is inappropriate, this is like what policy to use this. You know, you, you give them all those avenues. To me, I think, you know, if I'm going to be the person making the decision, which I, I, I honestly don't mind, I think it's got to be apparent that they have the right to appeal my decision to the board. You know, and that's, you know, that's what I'm saying. Just, <coughs> How many platforms are we going to utilize? Right now we have Facebook and Twitter. Facebook and Twitter. Okay, because Instagram's in here. I'm not seeing the need for that. Right. Well, I, I think we like could it. limit the number of platforms yeah. we have. I don't right. think we need to hit every one of them. Right. Um, yeah, I don't think we have them. We don't no. have them. So I just, you know, some of the stuff, once again, this was a draft that I, that I wanted you guys to look at so that you could see what you thought was appropriate yeah. for. Yeah. Are defamatory uh, attacks the same as accusatory comments? Is that the same thing? Similar. 
some of them the word Smith. I honestly don't know. I think defamatory means that you you attack the person's Despair. reputation yeah. as opposed to actually accusing them of something. So they're two different things. So if we could add that. Yeah. Um, you see the libel or slander? I can't remember yes. what it is. Mm -hmm. Defaming the character. Mm -hmm. Are you getting a better sense of what we're looking for? I, I do. Because so that we could table this. We're good at that tonight. We could table mm -hmm. this motion. So down. you're you're going to look for. Uh, you're basically what I'm going to do is going to come back. I'm going to put myself as a designated official. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put some language in there. If somebody that disagrees with my opinion that's appealable to the select board, mm -hmm. which I think you know I, I think, I think makes perfect in here. sense. Yeah. Um, make sure that's it. Take some of the other stuff out, but it will be a limited use. I will be the official that, that has the authority to review and delete a post based on these criteria. Yes. So you want to post well, well, I'll put you up there here. and then I'll bring it back to you. Okay. Because okay. you know, it's important. This is, you know, we haven't looked at it since. Um, just to make sure there's is there anything else that you want in there. Um, sorry. No, it's fine. You know, that that you've read through on this so that I know what to change and, and get it to be the, what the board wants for its policy. The only thing I can see that would get us into a bit of a potential free speech thing that I see in here, comments that are clearly unrelated to this subject matter as opposed, mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> and love that's they are. the definition of social media pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> um, I, would say that would be challenging to manage. Right. So I, I, I don't think we can put that in there. Okay. I think everything would be deleted. <laughs> it would. Because that's a, <laughs> if, you, if you see some of those threads, it's like, what? you see the pothole by Bridge Street, and what about Fish. the bumps up there at Penny Bridge? You know, goes totally on and on. detours. Uh, yeah. who, who currently has administrative authority over the, the sites that we do run? Erica, and Sarah. And Sarah and Trish and Trisha. On the administrator, or I'm probably the technical. I can post to it, but I'm yeah. not an administrator. Yeah, you are. You are. Let me try to know. I want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you want to make a motion to table this for tonight? Do we get it ready? I have a motion on the table, so somebody else should probably table this. Make a motion to table the approval of the social media policy. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Next, a new pavement cut application. Right away. Right away. Okay, right away. This is up. You know, he's going to connect the water line. He's actually going to go underneath the road and put a sleeve in. So he's not going to disturb the road. He's not going to cut it. He's not going to cut it. Make a motion to approve the policy. 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 Second. Further discussion. Are there any uh, inspections because he's boring? Are there any inspections done by the? Yeah, so he's going to take a pit on each side. Right. And bore push a sleeve through. Said we talked about it. You know, he wants to. I, I asked him to do a sleeve. That way, if there's a problem later on with the water line, he can pull the water line in and out if he needs to. If it break or something happens, it's, it's easy to fix without any working on the road again. So this will be the only time you should ever have to do something with it. Okay. Is there any depth that we set for this? Have to be down below the cross. Okay. All, right. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, approve warrants. Make a motion to approve the warrant. We don't, we don't, oh, we don't have, have any warrants, do we? That's right. Okay. So, next. Hi. DA report. Just a few things for me. Tomorrow night is the village trustee meeting on the, um, the, the sewer ordinance. How many people are actually going to be there tomorrow? I am not. Okay. If three of you show up, just do Erica a favor and take some quick open the meetings, close the meeting, and somebody give her a call the next day to do to do the minutes. If there's only two of you off, so we don't have to worry about that. But we did warn a meeting. Either way, somebody let her know so she can put even if it's canceled meeting, no, um, no quorum, something like that, so she can close the loop on that. Eric, you're in charge. Okay, got it. Um, quick reminder that you know, the agendas are there. There's the meeting next 
uh, Monday night, 5.30, um, on the new proposed showing road behind Tractor Supply. There's, there's actually a little parking area right there behind Tractor Supply, up on top of the hill. I'll meet there, and quick reminder, I will be out uh, the rest of this week. This is your vacation day, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I should have baked some brownies or something. So, I'm not sure yet. So. Okay. Any questions for Dan? Thank you, Dan. Select board concerns. Judy. I have none, thank you. Chris. Thank you for coming in on your vacation. Ditto. Ryan. Eric. It would be really interesting and thank to think newsworthy to report that over the last three or four years, you can compile it, if you would please, the total dollars spent in the town of Morristown to include this state project on paving. Like we have to go back, you know, the tax? Here, but we put something out. I don't know what the bid was on this project, quite frankly. Like, <coughs> um, you know, we can do that. I think it's not worthy for our citizenry who have talked to us about the condition of roads and all you do is drive outside of Morristown now and you can complain, but you can't complain here. Not much. Oh, you can. There are people do. Yeah, you can. But I just think it's you know, when this is, I heard $2 million on this project here in Morrisville. You've been up to 15 lately? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. did. <laughs> See what I mean? Don't need <laughs> The fire warden needs to be restful here. <laughs> no, but, yeah, we had a half million dollar bond vote. We spent $225,000 a year on paving out of our normal budget. Yeah, it's crazy that we spent. It's been a significant amount of money. There has been. Okay. I think taxpayers, you know, not only their town tax dollars, but their state tax dollars. Well, I just want to comment. I think the paving looks great in the downtown. It's like it's been since 1994, I think, was the last time it was done. And, you know, I've, I've had a few comments and, you know, complaints about this and that, but I think all in all, Hutchins did a great job. And it's so nice to have smooth roads in the downtown. By so, 2030, the pavement will be level with the sewer covers, I guarantee you. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of the big ones. The one at the top of Hutchins Street there is, is pretty, pretty big. That splits it. Another 26 years and we'll get another set of new pavement. The, the one on Hutchins Street, actually, that's, you know, that was our project. And yeah. Water and Life will be working on that, and that stuff yet still. Yeah. So there's still some work on those. Right. Done now. Not done. Not done. The other thing I wanted to bring up was uh, the little stickers they got out there for marking where the line's going to be. They still got the stop bar way back by the intersection. That's you know those those markings are there completely temporary. Okay. The the guy that's doing that has absolutely no idea that it's the center and the shoulder. So as long as they don't paint the lines. They're not painting lines. Todd and I actually met with the engineer last week uh, to review all the lines, to make sure that they were. Because what he had actually on his prints from the state did not match up to what the state had promised us to do. So we saved the drawing and gave that to him for what they promised us to do. So um, we will be doing some of the painting ourselves because you know they, they can't do everything exactly the way we would like it to be. Mm -hmm. So we will be doing some of the painting ourselves after um, they're done. So, but we've reviewed that with the state and he has our drawing. Good. Good. I see, I've seen a few almost accidents here because of that. Mm -hmm. People stop way back like they're supposed to, and somebody comes up from Portland and sees nobody there, so they pull out, and that person's already going to 15. And it's, and it's almost happened twice that I've seen. So, Once to me. <laughs> so those are just the you know, guy has to be walking right behind the roller on the paper, yeah. sticking those down. So. Yeah, but I've brought that up before. Denny. They did do a good job, and their flagging crew did outstanding. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of calls, and no matter what direction we were coming in or leaving, they were on it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they had communication from oil or feed or what, but their, their flagging crews did a really good job of letting our trucks get in and out. They were completely reactive then, they had no communication with them on this batch. But they, they worked they well worked. together. Yep, they did a great job. So just letting you know. Hey, I think the other thing, just Thanks. on this, you know, the, the businesses in the downtown the past couple of years have done a lot of construction in the downtown, and they have kind of persevered through all this. So um, I want to thank them because, you know, they've worked with the town staff well um, to get these projects done. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, they've, they've kind of bit the bullet known at the end of the tunnel, was, you know, was a lot of good things. So the businesses have, have helped us out do that. 
and Tom Luke has you know, worked with us exceptionally well because he's one of those businesses where even though they were paving the night, you know, he's done his best to help us get through this. So. Sounds good. Any other business? I move to find that we enter executive session to discuss the evaluation of a public oh, bill. Account. Sorry, I didn't see you. My bad. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, just a couple of things. One, the new A1 went in service this weekend. And it did, That's awesome. It, it did its first call on this crash on 100 here just a little while ago. So that's up and running. Uh, secondly, and Dan, I apologize. <coughs> I was on my way here to discuss this with you, and I got diverted to that crash. So uh, I never bring anything to you guys my boss doesn't know about. But unfortunately, that's good about to happen. Um, we spent the better part of today uh, either uh, on phone or voice uh, or email uh, setting up the flu clinic that we're hosting next week. Um, some of you may have already seen the notice on it. Um, uh, if you've got insurance, you come in, you get your shot, they take your insurance info, they send it out. Um, for people who are un underinsured or uninsured, it's 30 bucks. Uh, my concern is uh, that in looking at my roster, I may have 10 or 12 people that that may be a barrier for them to getting a flu shot. Uh, my experience in leadership in other agencies has been that the agency has picked that up for uh, staff members who are uninsured or underinsured to cover that. Um, in discussing it with Corey, uh, it doesn't appear that that was a budgeted item. Uh, for this coming year, or uh, for, for the current year that we're in. Uh, so I'm just, I'm, I'm asking, uh, I'm looking at probably if it's 10 or 12 people that were our, our, our unbudgeted expense on that, it's probably three to $400. Uh, but uh, I think it's imperative that our people be protected from that. Uh, the other part of that is that our people aren't giving it to our immunocompromised uh, patients that we see frequently. Um, so that uh, I'm just looking for some direction on how we want to move forward with that. You, uh, so you're going to get like seventy-five hundred dollars for the stretchers, right? Yes, ma'am. Can it come out of that? The uh, the only comment that we make on that is this year, uh, for the first time through the vaccines for adults program, that vaccines are covered for anybody sixty-five under sixty-five years of age. Okay. Influenza vaccines. So just as an FYI, if they go to their primary care provider or if it's um, that participates in the VFA program, which is every provider around here, right. um, they can receive it free of charge through there, just okay. as an FYI. Okay, thank you. But That's what I mean. I'm 100% in favor of vaccinating um, those who wish to be vaccinated. I, I just don't want it to be somebody's- uh, some Limiting one factor. My, one of my volunteer staff saying, I can't do the 30 bucks for that shot. Yeah. Um, uh, without me having the ability to say, we will pick up all of it or some of it or however, however it be. You guys want to see we'll pick it up if the doctor doesn't? I stick them. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, that's, that's a given expense. We've done the HEP B series for, the, for yeah. our first responders before at a great, greater expense than this influenza shot. I think we should be covering the cost of the influenza shot to all our personnel, honestly. I see you. Uh, I mean, sure fire out of the <coughs> does my, a lot of effort uh, response, too. So uh, I, I'd like to see fire include that. Anybody who wants to go up there and it's a town employee. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, give Denny a shot. He needs one. Well, my thoughts was making sure the fire department got it, too. Yeah. And is there any way that this program you're talking about can't work with him? It's possible. You'd have to connect with the hospital. Or I mean, if you're giving them at the hospital. Yeah, I'll flush that. You also could check with the Department of Health. Yes, sir. It's, it's not the money. It's just no, a, no, the, I'm not uh, concerned about the money as much. No, it's, it's precedence. Yeah, no, I understand, I understand yeah. that. Uh, it's new this year, too, so that's. Uh, the, the flip side of that, Brian, would be my precedence has always been to take care of that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yep. I'm just looking, I looking for help. Yeah. Your, your direction for that. Do we make a motion? I, you know, it's, it's within my expending authority, so okay. as long as the board's aware. But I just want to make sure if we have any first responders out there, I think the rest of the town staff is pretty well covered with insurance one way or the other. If we have first responders out there that want to go up and get a flu shot that, that don't have the insurance, the town's going to pick up the tab. Right. Sounds good. And, and Sounds next good. year we'll write something in the budget to do it. Yep. Okay. I'm going to say it should be part of it, I yep. think. And I, I, I kind of agree <coughs> with you and I would uh, yeah. 
discuss that. That just yes, didn't happen. You're buying coffee tomorrow, Bill. Does, Does anybody, anybody have anything else? Course, he's on vacation, but if he was here, he'd I'll give Denny the shop. To <laughs> bypass anyone else. What do you think? Okay. To okay go ready? ahead, Eric. He already knows his donuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we ready now? Yep. I move to find that we enter our executive session to discuss the evaluation of a public employee under the provisions of Title I, Sections 313, 3A3 3 of the Vermont Statutes to include Dan Lindley, Todd Thomas, and Sean Goodell. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So uh, Thanks for coming. Second. Favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs>